Hello all, welcome back to the 11 Trinist again and uh, thank you for your continuing support and uh, I apologize for uh, the delay between the videos. Uh, it's been a quite a busy month for me. We had a departmental inspection going on and a couple of other personal events. So as we are coming slowly out of the COVID times, I think it will be better for us to discuss some cases for the time being. I will promise you these cases will be very useful for your daily reporting. Hopefully it will be very good for you uh, as a learning uh, radiologist or learning uh, graduate student. So uh, these are a couple of rare findings in one case. Okay, so this is the first case which I am going to discuss with you. This is a patient uh, who had uh, came to our department with a history of uh, uh, carcinoma tongue with uh, post uh, therapy, post op, everything is done. And uh, he came for a re evaluation for uh, recurrence. And uh, we found out that he had a chest swelling, which on FNAC turned out to be his commercial carcinoma metastasis. So now going to the case, I would first what we do is I'll scroll through the images. You can assess for yourself and see the findings and then we will come back and discuss the case. So let's begin. So I believe the images are a little too much zoomed in. I'll just zoom out a bit so that you can see it better. I'm alone, I'm a broken home. I gave you all the bricks that I own and know. I'm letting go, I'm breaking these walls down, breaking these walls down. If you want adventure, then fight a home. But if you wanna travel, then go alone. Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go. Away. I'm tired of the pain. Go So since this is a image taken directly from our PET machine, the FOVs are not, FOV is quite big. So you may find it uh, a little bit pixeling here and there. Please uh, uh, bear with us. So it is covered from head to toe. So we will skip the lower part. We will consider this as abdominal pelvis with just screening. Okay. Then I uh, will scroll back top. Actually image this once again. So that will make it a picture again. I would uh, give you an idea, the areas to look at the bowel, the renal system, the bladder, the retroperitoneum, the liver, and of course the chest wall and anterior from the wall. So now I will switch to chest window so now going back to the window Okay, you may go back and see the images again and again. Uh, take your time. I would like you to do one thing. If you have seen, go through the images and you have found out the findings. Take a plain sheet of paper 
write the case details, whatever findings you have picked up while going through the image and then go ahead with the next part of the video. So pause it here right now and just wait. I will, you have to write down the findings. You can go back to the video and see the scrolled images again. I hope it is of good clarity. At least the initial abdomen window will be of good clarity for you to see. So pause it here now. Please go ahead and uh, uh, write it, write down the findings. So now we go to the discussion of the case. So starting from the oropharynx downwards. We were able to see there is a heterogeneously enhancing area on the right half of the tongue involving the floor uh, as well as uh, the adjacent pharyngeal wall with the uh, multiple lymph nodes and are also there. So whenever you see lymph nodes, you have to write the station of the lymph nodes. So these are very large, large lymph nodes in the level 1A and uh, there are lymph nodes in the level 1P as well, which are having a cystic morphology kind of changes. So both sides it is there in 1P, both sides it is there. Then when you come down in the cervical level also, there are multiple lymph nodes, which you have to mention in your report. If you are giving an oncology imaging, you have to give the stations, give the report, sizes, so that on a post-therapeutic follow-up, it will be useful for the patient and for the clinician to assess the response because most of the time the first, first things to undergo post therapeutic response will be the lymph nodes. There will decrease in size or it can change in enhancement or both. There can be both in most cases. So going down uh, here I agree the FOV is not that good because of the acquisition plane. So when you come down you always see for the supraclavicular nodes if at all if it's there any so once you reach the chest part, first I always uh, what I will do is I will look for the medias and lymphadenopathy first. Then we will go ahead and look at the chest. That will that way you won't miss anything. So here also you can see there are multiple enhancing lymph nodes are there in the right upper paratracheal, in the iatopulmonary window. You have uh, lymph nodes in the iatopulmonary window. You have in the prevascular space, this is the prevascular space, superior that is almost uh, corresponding to superior to the aortic uh, branches, very really small ones. So these are not uh, lymph nodes. So you, whenever you have a suspicion between a vessel and lymph node, always try tracing it. So all vessels will continue like this, the lymph nodes will not. So you can see here these are all small lymph nodes which does not continue. So going down, we are going down. So now I will tell you about the spaces of the lymph nodes. So this is the iota pulmonary window between the arch and the uh, uh, pulmonary bifurcation. So if there are some lymph nodes here. This is the carinal level. So you can either refer, write it as right lower paratracheal or carinal. But uh, these are the ones which is uh, in after the division is called subcarinal group of lymph nodes. Everywhere there are lymph nodes. So whenever you write lymph nodes, you have to mention whether it is enlarged homogeneously enhancing or it is heterogeneously enhancing or it is subcentimetric in size okay so like that so go ahead and uh, see the chest wall also along with this area you can see a very large cystic appearance only now in the chest wall so this way this patient on a previous evaluation unfortunately which i don't have image for had a little bit more solid kind of lesion here which on chemotherapy now have become cystic and the previous FNAC was done from the chest wall lesion here in the anterior chest wall. So, so that, uh, so that, uh, that is the lesion, whatever the size you want to give, you can measure and give. You have to measure all the sizes in two different orthogonal planes. I usually give in the PEPSIP reporting, we usually give uh, it in uh, three planes so that the uh, next time when the uh, radiologist or uh, whoever clinician is evaluating, they can correlate. So you should ideally take one more plane in the SAG section and uh, you have to measure it like this so that uh, it will be easy for a follow. So going ahead, 
So when you come here, we will go to the chest window. In chest window, as you can see, there are multiple nodular lesions, different sizes, peripherally located. Some with subdural uh, attachment is there in some cases. And you can see the, the multiple cavitating nodular lesions are also there. These cavitating nodular lesions are a typical presentation of squamous cell metast metastasis in lung or even primary squamous cell carcinoma of lung also it can have cavitating lesions. So since we already knew the diagnosis, we didn't go ahead and do a biopsy of these areas and the patient's uh, GCP was not that good. Okay, so there are multiple liver or lung nodules. So for each nodule, if you want to measure, it's good. But ideally, what we do is we will take each lobe, upper lobe, right upper lobe, right left lower lobe, then left upper lobe, left lower lobe, and right middle lobe. Then we will measure the largest nodule in each lobe and then give it like that. So this is also a good way to uh, manage time and give a good report. So uh, that part is done. Now we will go to the abdomen where we have a quite a number of findings. So I will go and uh, address the elephant in the house. So here we have a case which is already diagnosed with a squamous cell carcinoma of uh, oropharynx. So, okay, lung metastasis is explained, lymph nodal metastasis is explained. When it comes to renal metastasis, it is quite a dilemma. Sometimes in some cases you can have multiple tumors uh, together. And especially in this particular case, if you look carefully, there is a thrombus in the left uh, renal vein. Usually, squamous cell carcinoma metastasis doesn't cause uh, thrombus in uh, veins. Uh, so, we have to think about a primary RCC kind of tumor also as a possibility in this particular case. And uh, if uh, it, uh, it would have come positive, then we would have thought of uh, multi cancer symptoms because you have a one type of histopathology cancer in one side and you have another entirely different cancer in another place means it address you have to see for genetic studies. So in this particular case we have bilateral lesions are there. Uh, on the right side it is almost maintaining the renal outline uh, but on the left side the renal uh, kidney appears to be grossly enlarged but still the reniform appearance is somewhat maintained. And also you can see up in the upper region the adrenal mass is also can be seen continuous with the uh, renal lesion in some areas. So we have a left adrenal mass, we have a bilateral renal lesions in this case and we do have a left renal vein thrombosis. So with this uh, reference to this renal vein thrombosis, we also gave a differential of a primary renal tumor has to be ruled out and uh, which should have been evaluated. So that's the thing. Then another important finding in this case which again can, uh, like somewhat consolidated our possibility or our doubt about a uh, multi-cancer syndrome is the presence of a cystic appearing heterogeneously enhancing lesion in the descending column. Descending column here. See this lesion, this one particular lesion is having a heterogeneous appearance with peripheral enhancement and uh, uh, somewhat very, very atypical appearing lesion. And uh, um, initially we thought whether it is a diverticular malignancy because you can see it has a small communication between the actual lumen and it is almost existing in the wall of the, uh, the descending column. But uh, without colonoscopy, you can't confirm these findings. So we have suggested colonoscopy in this case. So with that, uh, you have to trace the entire bowel C4 diabetic class whenever you see uh, or suspect a diabetic pathology. So keeping this in mind, we came back and we saw something wrong here at the second part of the duodenum and uh, you, we have an atypical appearing pancreas also. The tail is normal, body is normal, the yeah, head is normal, but the, in the ancillary process region close to the opening or the drainage side of your uh, common bile duct, we, we can see the ventral portion and the dorsal portion is appeared to be separated. So this happens in uh, two three conditions. One is uh, when you have a partial uh, complete and uh, pancreas, but here posterior to the second part of your arm, there is no uh, uh, pancreatic tissue, so or lateral also there is no pancreatic tissue, and there is no proximal bowel dilatation as well. So that is out of the question. So here probably what is happening is that you have a uh, differential morphology of your uh, pancreatic. Parenchyma is mainly because we have a diverticulum 
which is separating the dorsal and uh, ventral portions here. The uh, patient is asymptomatic uh, otherwise, so we can't say for sure the whether it is significant or not. So uh, in the axial images, uh, it is a little bit taxing to see the actual size and uh, opening of the uh, diverticula. So we will use the 3D cursor tool and uh, slowly see it in other plates for better understanding whether or not it is communicating with the uh, true woman. We have to see. So you can see while I am moving this carefully in the coronal images, there is a definite communication here. You can see here there is a definite communication here, opening into the second part, the junction of the second and third part of the organ. There is a communication of the diverticula there. And also, if you notice here closely, there is a somewhat prominent appearing uh, your uh, your Distal CBD is somewhat a little bit prominent, but I won't say it is dilated because it is less than 10 mm in size, so it is just prominent. Uh, can be due to numerous causes, maybe this uh, duodenum is uh, reducing the uh, 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 your opening aperture size, but we don't know. But uh, he, the one thing for sure is this is a diverticular, and the reason why the pancreas has a different morphology as a normal one, see here we can see very closely, it is like more like a claw appearing pancreas. We have seen fishtail pancreatic deformities, but this is totally different, it is like at the head region, so you can't uh, categorize this into that. So this is, I believe, this is a rare, rare presentation. Uh, if you have any such cases you have seen through your uh, radiological periods, please comment. We would have a discussion so that we can have a concurrence with the cases. So finally, we have concluded it as a duodenal diverticulum causing variant morphology of the head and alternate process of pancreas. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, the cystic duct CBD, everything appears to be normal in openings and uh, anatomy. Minimal HBRD was there, but uh, when we did ultrasound correlation, it was not that evident, but we still mentioned that. So, this is a very rare finding. I, could, I couldn't find any such cases reported uh, online. Unfortunately, we didn't or we couldn't do uh, an endoscopy for this case so far. Uh, or if at all we are doing it, I will let you know the follow-up. So, thank you. This was the case which I wanted to discuss. I hope I have covered most of the things in the short time. As you all know, it uh, takes a longer time to discuss how many things are there. There are other findings also in this case, which I would like you to see carefully and uh, you can comment it up. Thank you. Also, do subscribe the channel, continue watching, continue supporting us so that we can uh, put more and more new videos. Let us uh, reach the 1K landmark as soon as possible share the study with other of your colleagues uh, feel free to discuss in the in, uh, discussion page or you can send me a personal email at uh, the registered email id mentioned here thank you okay.